Hello everyone, my name is Seth, and today I'm going to give you my review of X-Men 97. X-Men 97 is a sequel series on Disney Plus that is following up the original X-Men animated series that aired from 1992 through 1997. It was a favorite show for so many people growing up, so you could imagine that the announcement of X-Men 97 was a dream come true for a lot of people. But before I go any farther, go ahead and like this video, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. We are getting closer and closer to 200 subscribers, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's free, it'll absolutely make my day. I didn't actually watch this series growing up as a kid. It was a little bit before my time and I never really watched it on any of the reruns. I was more of a Spider-Man 90s show kid. So when this was announced and throughout watching this, I didn't necessarily have the nostalgia for that a lot of other people did, but I will say that this absolutely lived up to the hype for me. The first thing I want to start out with is just the animation. That's the first thing that really stands out to me when I watch the show. The best way I can describe it is that it's this Saturday morning cartoon style that you know and love and that's familiar to you, but it's just elevated. All of the lines and the artwork and the animation are very crisp. All of the colors are really deep and vibrant. And even though it still has the same kind of Saturday morning cartoon feel to it, at the same time, it feels pretty cinematic. Action is another way that the animation really shines in this series. Just what they do with the animation, especially during the action sequences, just kind of brings a bigger, larger-than-life kind of feel to it. It just makes it really exciting. It's just a pretty animated show to look at. Another thing that I think really shines here is the writing. And the writing is more than just nostalgia. It's more than relying on what you know and love. They're able to keep true to the original show while still giving us something new. They were somehow able to both modernize the show without losing what made it special to begin with. It still honors and pays respect to the original animated show. And when you're having kind of like a revival like this, a sequel series that's many years later, that's exactly what you want. Another thing I got to give them credit for in the writing is that they're able to take these pretty complex storylines from the comics and they're able to take it and condense it some and make it really accessible to anybody, whether you know the X-Men or not, whether you watched the original show or not. All of these characters are so true to their comic counterparts. And all throughout this show, there's a lot of characters to balance. They balance them all very well, and they all have their moments. They all have some kind of depth to them. That's a very difficult thing to do, but they do such a good job with that. I really love how they are able to manage all of these characters and really make them all feel a part of the team. Even some of the smaller characters, maybe somebody like Morph that isn't one of the main characters, kind of get to know him a little bit and he's still an important part of the team. I think that's one of the best things that they do here is the whole team aspect and just all of their relationships and having them be a part of this team, this family environment, the writing is just so good, and they nail that aspect. All of the dialogue here works, and it sounds so natural. All of the characters have their own unique way of speaking, and that's much appreciated. None of these characters feel like repeats of each other. I think really my only complaint about the writing would be sometimes it feels maybe a little bit rushed, sometimes it just feels like they're kind of trying to get through the story a little bit quick. It just feels kind of abbreviated at times. There are times where I wish they would kind of slow down just a little bit more and really get to sit with these characters and their emotions. Not everything is rushed. And like I said, I do really love the story that they tell. I love how they tell it. It's just a few times I wish they would slow down a little bit. I will say that the story has a absolutely massive scale to it. There's a lot to this story that they're telling. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of characters. And the fact that they're able to make this work as well as it does shows just how well that these writers understand not only the story that they're telling, 
not only the comics, not only the history of the show, but they understand these characters incredibly well too. There are major consequences in this story, and I think they handle them all expertly. I think maybe there's one episode that's a little bit weaker than the others, but even with that, every episode was very, very enjoyable, and I could not wait for the next episode. Through the whole spectacular action, set pieces, and things like that, we do get to spend some time with these characters. We get to marinate in the story a little bit, and we get to experience the grief and the trauma that some of these characters go through. It's all handled so incredibly well. And along with the characters being written well, they're also performed very well. I know they tried to get as many of the original voice actors back as they could, and both the older voice actors and the newer voice actors, they all did a fantastic job. They all embodied their characters, and for the most part, they sound exactly how you would picture them sounding if you were to just see a still image. You can tell just from these performances that there's a lot of passion for these characters. Ray Chase as Cyclops is fantastic. He's probably the biggest highlight of the show for me. You absolutely believe him as the leader of the X-Men. They do Cyclops so well here. Part of it's the writing, part of it's the performance. But he has some really great emotional moments here, and I love pretty much every second we get to spend with Cyclops. Jennifer Hale is absolutely a voice acting legend. Even if you don't know the name, you definitely know the voice. You absolutely heard her in something. She absolutely kills it as Jean Grey. She does such a great job. Another highlight for me is Cal Dodd as Wolverine. At first, it felt a little bit odd to me to not hear Steve Bloom, because Steve Bloom's the first voice actor I hear in my head when I think of Wolverine. I absolutely love his version of Wolverine anytime he gets to play it, but Cal perfectly matched this particular version of Wolverine. And George Buzza as Beast was so good. I love Beast, and he just brought a lot of gravitas to this character. I think the only voice that didn't really work for me in this show was Rogue, but it's not because of the performance. I think the performance of Rogue was actually really well done. The lines were delivered very well. There was a lot of really good emotion in this season from Rogue, but for me, it's the tone of the voice that just doesn't quite work for me. And hopefully this doesn't sound too rude, but to me, for this character of Rogue, I felt like the voice sounded just a little bit too old. Rogue is supposed to be, you know, early, mid-twenties, but to me, it just kind of sounded like, you know, your older Southern aunt, and it just, it didn't quite work for me. So maybe the tone doesn't work for me, but the performance of Rogue is really well done, if that makes sense. The action all throughout this season was a ton of fun. It was colorful, it was energetic, and it was always a blast. Each character with their unique powers got to shine at some point during this season. I would say just think of like the fun, kind of over-the-top Saturday morning cartoon style of action and just turn it up a couple of notches. I was absolutely locked into every single action sequence, and I think it helps that you actually care about all of these characters. Overall, I think I would say I like X-Men 97, probably more than I was expecting to. I would highly recommend watching the show. Whether you've seen the original animated show or not, I think you will get a ton of enjoyment out of it. From beginning to end, I think they absolutely nailed every aspect of this show, and it doesn't fall into the same kind of trap that a lot of other film or TV might can run into after a long hiatus. The animation is well done. The characters all have their moments and they have a lot of depth to them. I love how they get to work together as a team, as a family. The voice performances are very, very good. The action is great and they're able to take these complicated themes, these complicated stories throughout the comics and really make them accessible to anybody. This honestly is just absolutely fantastic X-Men storytelling and I Cannot wait to see what comes next. And one request I will say, now that we've kind of done the X-Men 97 thing, we're going to have some more of it. If they're interested in kind of ramping up more of the Marvel animation side of things, I would absolutely love a revival of the Spider-Man show. Like I said in the beginning, I was more of the 90s Spider-Man show kind of kid. And so 
I absolutely would love to see an X-Men 97 reversion of that Spider-Man show. But overall, I think I'm going to give this a 4.5 out of 5. But that's it. That's my review of X-Men 97. If you've seen the show, let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts about it. Don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can follow me on social media pretty much anywhere at CinemaSeth, and I'll see you next time.